Kurdistan is one part of the world with a very complex history. Throughout ancient times, the area has been ground of many mighty kingdoms and empires, and in modern time, the nation of Kurdistan has been occupied by different countries. Within the border of Kurdistan, there are many disputed areas and cities. For example, the capital of Rojava, Kamishli, claimed by both Assyrians and Kurds. Looking at Iraqi-occupied Kurdistan, there is several disputed areas such as Shingal, Khanakin, Duzgurmatu, and Kirkuk. For today, we are going to talk about Kirkuk, which often are mentioned as the heart of Kurdistan. However, other than Kurds, also Arabs, Turkmens, and Assyrians claim the city for being theirs. So what is the truth? Let's find out. This is the first video in a new series where we will talk about Kurdish cities and places, so subscribe to the channel and comment below which city or place in Kurdistan you would like us to talk about in the next episode. With that said, let's go over to the first episode, Kirkuk. So, Kirkuk is a city located within the modern border of Iraq. The city is today one of Iraq's most multicultural cities with large minorities of Turkmens and Arabs and a smaller minority of Assyrians. Besides the minorities, the city has a majority of Kurds living in the city. An estimated population rate of Kirkuk is around 1 million people in 2009. The earliest demographic statistics available of the city is from 1957. Around then, 48.2% of the population were of Kurdish descent, while 28.2% were of Arabic descent. Turkmens were estimated to be around 21.4%. The remaining 2.2 were of various other ethnicities, however Assyrians were the bigger majority out of this 2.2. The next population statistic came in 1987. Now comparing the two, now comparing the two, there is a lot of difference between the city's populations. And you may ask why. The answer to that is this man, Saddam Hussein, dictator of Iraq, who during his reign of terror performed a campaign called the Arabization of Disputed Areas. Due to Kirkuk being one of the richest cities of oil in the world, it was strategically important for the dictator to have an Arab majority in the city. Kurds were forbidden to buy property in Kirkuk and could only sell their property to Arabs. Meanwhile, poor Shia Arabs were paid to move into Kirkuk while Kurds were paid to move out. Now, in the statistics from 1997, the Kurds are suddenly a minority with its 21% while the Arab suddenly is a majority with its 72%. One may believe that the 72% rate can be an attempt of statistic propaganda from Saddam Hussein. On the other hand, we know that many Kurds were forced away from Kirkuk by the Ba'ath regime, and it wasn't until the fall of Saddam that Kurds were allowed to move back into the city. Today the city is estimated to have a Kurdish majority again, and after the Iraqi Minister of Planning announced that approximately 224,544 Kurds have moved back to Kirkuk, while 52,973 Arabs have left the city. When the Islamic State advanced in Iraq, the city which were in control of the new, mostly corrupted Iraqi army were abandoned as the Iraqi army fled the city. Close to the place where the army fled, the Peshmerga of Kurdistan were holding its border and the leadership of, of the Kurdish forces quickly saw its chance to expand its official territory and without force take control of the undefended city. From there on, until the end of 2017, Kurdish Peshmerga defended the city with heart from terrorists. The Islamic State made several attempts to take Kirkuk, but were not able to do so. Later on, as the Islamic State lost a lot of its territorial gains in Iraq, Kurdistan held a referendum of independence from Iraq and announced that disputed areas such as Kirkuk and Shingal would be included in the referendum. This announcement, or the announcement of referendum itself, was not easily taken by the Iraqi government, which threatened Kurdistan with military actions if the referendum would take place. 
The referendum took place and even Arab Iraqi citizens of Kirkuk voted for independence as a result of the peaceful and pro-multicultural governing of the city that had taken place in Kirkuk by the Kurdish government. The new, stronger Iraqi army which were reorganized by Haider al-Abadi started an offensive against the disputed areas of Kirkuk and Shingal and with support from the PMU, the Iranian supported Shia militia they took control over the cities and have since then been holding on the heart of Kurdistan. Kirkuk was easily given to the Iraqi government due to a disunion within the Kurdish army. We will of course talk about this in a future episode. Only a few weeks after taking the city, reports came of looting and mass deportation of Kurdish homes by the Shia militia and the people they made resistance unhappy with the new ruling authority in Kirkuk. For when the Kurdish government controlled the city, Turkmen and Iraqi flags alongside Kurdish flags were allowed, however under the new control you probably got killed holding up a Kurdish flag. Let's go back in time and look over Kirkuk's earlier history. Is it possible to say that the city of Kirkuk is only Kurdish, only Assyrian, only Turkmenian or only Arabian? No. The reason for that is two. Firstly, the city has, as mentioned before, belonged to several empires and kingdoms during different times. Looking back, the first known empire that controlled the city were the Akkadian Empire. Now, if we should imply the rule that the first empire present in Kirkuk should control the city, Kirkuk should be given to the Sumerians. However, since the Sumerians are an extinguished collection of people that became assimilated with other ethnic groups, as empires passed through, throughout the history, the whole theory of giving it to the first people falls apart. Simply put, there isn't any Sumerian people today. Around 2150 BC, people from the Zagros mountain known as the Gutian people settled and occupied the city of Kirkuk. Disclaimer, the modern Kurdish people is most probably an assimilated group of former ancient people such as the Gutians, Medes and the Cardusian. So with other words, the first modern Kurds moving into Kirkuk was under 2150 before Christ. They were later forced away from those who would implement Kirkuk into the old Assyrian Empire between 2025 and 1750 before Christ. It then became part of the Babylonian Empire for a short while before retaken by Assyria once again in 1725 BC. Now what about Assyrians you may ask? Since they are an existing people, are they not capable of getting Kirkuk for themselves? I would doubt it since firstly Assyrians mix around only 0.6% of the population in Kirkuk today, around 60,000 persons. Now even if we took all the Assyrians in whole Iraq and put them in Kirkuk, they would still be a minority since there is a larger ethnic Kurdish group there today. Let's keep going through history though. Kirkuk became part of the Median Empire somewhat around 600 BC. Now this was the second time Kirkuk was part of a Kurdish Empire. However this reign was short lived and the whole Median Empire soon became the first Persian Empire and so it kept going to the Macedonian Empire and the Parthian Empire who both had Kirkuk under its control for different amount of times. Finally, the Arabs from Saudi Arabia came, spreading Islam from south to the north. Let's just summarize, we have a lot of ethnic groups in Kirkuk. Turkmens are the Turks who remained in Kirkuk after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Now this is the most recent empire holding Kirkuk. But in ancient times there is no Turkish Empire since the Turks has the origins from the Mongolian Empire which were invading from the east. Kurds are the majority people of the city and has had two Kurdish empires in the city. It also controlled the city from 2014 to 2017 with balance, peace and respect for all beliefs and ethnic belongings. Arabs came to the city during the expansion of Islam and has ruled the city for most years in modern time. However, during these times, Kirkuk has been rated as Iraq's most dangerous cities since it's been full of war and terror. Just looking at the situation after the Arabs retook the city from Peshmerga, 
the violence and dangerous environment has escalated once again in the city. Now what about the Assyrians? Well, they had Kirkuk for most years in the ancient times, but makes up a too small population to control Kirkuk today. They also don't have any suitable government or defense to hold the city. The most appropriate choice of ruling Kirkuk is a Kurdish one, and I will mention why this is. Firstly, the people wants it. During the referendum, a huge majority of the multi-ethnical population in Kirkuk voted yes for Kurdish independence. This included Kurds, Arab, Assyrians and Turkmens. So why not listen to the people? Secondly, it was tested. It worked. Kirkuk were under Kurdish rule for three years. The people of Kirkuk have now experienced Ba'ath rule, Kurdish rule and Shia rule and out of these the Kurdish rule have been the most democratic, secure and respectful rule of them all. It was tested and it worked. Thirdly, Kurdistan has the best odds to hold the city. Kurdistan has a government, it has a military strong enough for threats and it also defends democracy in the region. The most capable and suitable choice of them all. Fourth, Kurdistan has a historical connection to the city. Unlike Arabs, who are a recent group in the area, if we compare them with the Kurds, Kurds have lived there much longer and is among the ancient indigenous people in the area. What do you think? Is Kirkuk part of Kurdistan or not? Should Kurdish rule be implemented in the city or not? Comment below, leave a like and subscribe to this channel in order not to miss anything else in the future. See you soon.